Summit County Road funding grows 1,000% in 20 years. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. First, the latest on an I-70 armed standoff outside of Rifle, where authorities confirm a suspect shot yesterday has died. The Post Independent reports police stopped 57-year-old Alan George of Eagle County yesterday evening on a bridge over the Colorado River. Things escalated when George pulled a gun. Police did not confirm if he fired before he was shot. He was taken to the hospital and pronounced dead. No officers or passerby were injured. Police stopped George on an active warrant for child pornography. This past weekend was the second busiest of summer on I-70. 156,600 vehicles passed through both sides of the Eisenhower-Johnson Tunnel Friday through Sunday. That's more than the combined populations of Summit, Eagle, and Garfield counties, and more than July 4th weekend, second only to Frisco Barbecue Weekend in mid-June with 161,000 people. Average daily travel was 52,200 cars, 28% higher than August last year. This month is historically the third busiest on the Mountain Corridor behind March and July. Last week, we reported on taxes and boom times, and why Summit County's reliance on property tax instead of sales tax means the county has less funding now than in 2008. But there are two big exceptions, roads and open space. We are putting more dollars, as many dollars as we can towards some of those road and bridge projects because we know that's important to the community. That was County Manager Scott Bargo. In 1999, the county spent $240,000 per year on road and bridge projects. This year, it spends $2.7 million, a 1,000% increase in 20 years. It's all about preparing for future growth same as open space projects. Key among their mission is to protect the character of Summit County. What does that look like? That's the backcountry and us trying to acquire backcountry mining claims. That's us acquiring large ranch properties in the lower blue, maintaining view corridors, etc. County voters approved an open space funding question in 2010. Since then, the county has spent $14 million to protect 3,200 acres. There's a gaping hole on Rainbow Drive where the outlets at Silverthorne once were. Demolition at the Northwest Village started late last week, and by today, just about everything is torn down. Those outlets in the Chipotle parking lot have been fenced off for at least one year for a new project. Tune in later this week for details from the developer. This Thursday, demolition continues on Highway 9 for the 4th Street Crossing project, where crews begin partial demolition at the Old Dillon Inn. The historic bar there will become a speakeasy, tucked away inside a new market hall. Open Opening is two to three years away. Tobacco, workforce housing, and downtown parking are on the town council agenda in Dillon tonight. Council votes on first reading of new tobacco laws, raising the legal age to 21. New taxes, like $4 per pack of cigarettes, must be approved by voters first. At the work session, council hears the latest on affordable housing along U.S. Highway 6 below the Tenderfoot Trail, with a mix of seasonal and long-term units for U.S. Forest Service employees. That will be funded in part by taxpayer money. Council also hears the latest on a parking study, which proposed a downtown parking structure costing $40,000 per space. Council will not approve a structure and wants other solutions. Tonight's work session is happening right now. The regular meeting begins at 7. Local fire danger is moderate today with no fire restrictions. In sports, the Rockies play the Astros tonight at 610. And in local sports, brought to you by Wilderness Sports in Dillon. Tomorrow is race 5 of the Summit Trail Running Series with 7K and 11K races on Flumes and Gold Run. Online registration is closed, but you can sign up on site starting 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.